Welcome to this workout. This one is loosen up your body and it's audio described. What that means is I am going to try to tell you in as much detail as I can about every movement and the correct way to do them, more so than I would if you were watching a video. That makes it suitable for people who have either low vision or no vision, and also for anybody who just prefers to listen along rather than watching as they do the workout. Loosen up your body is really basic. It should be safe for anybody who feels that they don't normally exercise or you don't really know what you're doing when you're trying to do exercise. If you're somebody that feels really stiff and achy most mornings when you get out of bed, this is probably where you should be starting. If you're an absolute beginner, try this one. Follow along carefully with the instructions. Listen to the way that I'm explaining to do things because always there's a right way and a wrong way and you're going to be much safer if you're following along really carefully. Okay, a few safety tips to start off with. Make sure that your workout area is free from clutter and appropriate for being able to do the workout. Don't do it on a rug or a heavy carpet. Best would be a sort of kitchen type floor, a smooth, level, even surface. Have a bottle or a glass of water to hand. It's a really good thing to get into the habit of drinking regular sips of water throughout the workout and throughout your day. Water is great for the body and it's great for the brain. Keep pets out. You don't want them wandering in and causing you problems in the middle of your workout. Shut the door, get the dog or the cat out of the way. Make sure that your shoes are appropriate. No slippers, no sandals, no high heels, nothing that is going to impede your stepping and your movement. And lastly, especially if you're not used to doing exercise and if you feel unsteady when you're on your feet for a while, it's a really good idea to have a chair to hand that can just help you with your balance a bit. A sturdy kitchen type chair is what I'm talking about here with a chair back. That's the bit that we're going to be using because you're going to place the chair so that you are standing with the chair back directly in front of you so that you can place your hands lightly on top of it in order to help you with your balance. When you're using a chair like this, be aware that it's there just to help you to feel steadier at points during your workout. Generally, the idea is that you are going to reduce your reliance on your chair as you get more acclimatized to standing and moving. It's not there for you to lean over. So please don't start off and continue with the habit of leaning heavily over the chair. Otherwise, you're never going to get used to being able to control your body in balance while you're standing and moving. So the way to do it is to stand just a little way away from the chair, not too far, because you don't want to be forced to lean in. So you stand upright, just with your fingers lightly on the chair. As you improve, you can just bring one hand down by your side and then try bringing both hands down by your side and see whether you can do the same movements actually not using the chair. There are a couple of points in this video where we're going to do exercises that need you to have your chair taken around to one side or the other of your body and I'll make that clear where that is. For the rest of the time, it'll be perfectly safe for you to leave the chair in front of you and you are always able to put either one hand or both hands on the chair as you feel is necessary, all right? I won't necessarily always say hands on your chair, it's up to you, okay? Right, I think we're ready to start, so let's get going. This is Loosen Up Your Body. So, starting with the chair in front of you, if you feel you need it, and with your hands lightly on top of it, if you need them there, we are going to start by just stepping on the spot. So you'll hear that I'm just lifting my feet in a very steady, gentle stepping action. As we do this, I want you to think about your posture. You need to feel that you've lengthened your spine up. One way of thinking about that is to try to reach the top of your head upwards as much as possible as though it's trying to touch the ceiling. 
but keeping your chin completely level so you're not tipping your head upwards. So think the top of your head is reaching tall and that will help you to lengthen through your spine. No slouching or slumping. Your shoulders need to be open so that your arms are nice and loose at the sides of your body. Your palms lightly touch the sides of your legs. You don't want to have your feet too wide when you're stepping on the spot. Try to keep them just underneath your front hips, so not as wide as your side hips. I call this railway tracks. Feet are parallel, but they're never too wide from each other and they're not touching each other as you step. Okay, that's probably enough stepping there. We're going to stand still for a moment. Keeping your feet on the railway tracks, don't widen them when you want to stand still. Soft knees, that means not pulling your kneecaps up very harshly. Let them have just a little bit of ease, a little tiny bend in the knees. Also, very important for posture, your lower abdominal muscle. This is round about your belly button, so think of a belt all the way around your body and gently draw that in. It's a small pull in on that muscle and that is something that you should be trying to do all day, every day. It's a stability control muscle. We call it sometimes core stability. So whenever you can remember, gently draw that in towards your lower back. Okay, we're standing still with soft knees, spine lengthened, arms loose at your sides. From here, we're going to start the first exercise of turning your head. So keeping your chin level, you're going to turn your head around to one side of you and back to the center. Then ease it round to the other side of you and back to your center, always keeping your chin level. And we repeat, head goes around one way and back to your center. Head goes around the other way and back again. Check that you haven't dropped your chin. So first way round, ease it as far as you feel it will go, but don't force it round, back to your center and around the opposite way as far as you can and back to center. And finish with your head directly forwards, stepping on your spot. That's a real basic neck loosening exercise. If you do it regularly, you'll find soon that you get a little bit more movement in both directions through your neck. Okay, here we are stepping. And now we're going to stop still again, same thing, feet on your railway tracks underneath your front hips, soft knees. We're going to lift shoulders directly upwards to your ears and then slide them back down again. So this one, just keep your hands, palms lightly against the legs so you'll feel them sliding up and sliding back down as the shoulders pull up to your ears. We go up and we slide back down, keep that going and sliding the shoulders up to try to touch your ears and back down. Take care not to move your head here. It's quite easy to confuse head and shoulders, all right? When you move the shoulders, your head will kind of go up or down to try to help, but you wanna keep your head really still. And last one of lifting the shoulders and back down again. Okay, so from here we're going to roll the shoulders. So this time we're bringing the shoulders upwards but slightly forwards and then you are going to, at the top, take your shoulders behind you and draw them back down. So these are shoulder circles. They come up in front, they draw backwards behind and pull down again. And again, your arms will sort of follow. So the hands do come up slightly, but you keep your arms long the whole time. And we're gonna do three more of those coming up, around and back down. And again, even more importantly here, keep your head still as you go up, around and down. And last one, chin stays still, up around and down and stepping on your spot. That one is really great. 
making your shoulders feel much looser and also your neck because we get a lot of tightness through neck muscles just on day-to-day -day stuff that we do. Okay, we're stepping. When you step, be sure always that you properly lift your feet. Don't do lazy stepping. Don't leave a bit of the toe on the ground. It's really important for these everyday small movements because they help to keep all your muscles properly conditioned. Okay, stopping stepping there for a moment. We're going to take the feet a little bit wider to your sides, all right? So now just walk your feet fractionally wider so that you feel that your heels are more like underneath your shoulders. Keep the soft knees. Arms are going to be at your sides with your palms at the sides of your legs. Pull in your lower tummy muscle, that belt of abdominal muscle. And without moving an inch forwards, you're going to slide one hand sideways down towards the knee. So we're doing a little side bend here and then coming up to your center again. Your other hand is going to reach, creeping sideways down towards the edge of the knee and up it comes. These are small movements. We're going again, first direction. We're loosening gently through the spine sideways. So it's not a great big thing. I'm not trying to get sideways down to the ground. I'm only going down towards the knee joint and back up again. And most important, there's no leaning backwards or forwards as we do this. It's sideways only. Keep it going. I am talking and moving at the same time, even though you can't see that. And up we come. We're going to do one more each way. So imagine you've got a pane of glass directly in front of you. You've got another pane of glass directly behind you. And if you go either forwards or backwards, you're going to bash your head. And here's the last one. Up we come. And that's enough of the side bends. Now you're bringing both of your hands just by your belly button. You're going to rest them at your center. And we're now going to turn the whole of the top half of the body around. Think head, shoulders, elbows at your sides are going around together. Bottom half stays still. This is rotating. Off we go around to the first side and back to the center. So we're twisting the top off a bottle, really. Top half of the body turns, bottom half stays still. Around the other way and back to center. Same again. First direction around and back to the center. Second direction around. Remember, top half of the body only. Twist is from the waist. You should feel a little pull through your waist as you turn head and shoulders together and back to the center. Careful not to let your shoulders ride up. Tight, high shoulders is very common. Keep them down, that way they stay relaxed. Around again, first side, and back to your center. Second side, everything gently turning around together, and back to your center. Arms down at your sides, bring your feet back onto their railway tracks, underneath your front hips. And we're stepping and actually now I've bent my elbows, I'm bringing them into my side and I'm digging back a little bit. So I'm doing like marching arms, just gentle marching arms. Nothing here is very vigorous, all right? If you want vigorous, then you need to listen to the cardio lockdown or lockdown cardio session. That's much more vigorous because it's aiming to get your heart and lungs working. Okay, stopping still again. We're going to take the feet wider, back to that slightly wider position, out to each side. Soft knees, nice, steady, sturdy stance here. And now, I'm going to take my body over to one leg and then over onto the other leg. So this is a sideways sway. We're just moving the body onto the first leg, then onto the second leg, keeping a gentle movement. Sway and sway. Be careful here to make sure that you keep the top bit of your body still. You're not moving it up and down. It's just going across from the first leg, across to the second leg. You will feel that the back of your feet is maybe coming off a little bit, but keep your front of your feet, your toes on the ground the whole time. We don't want to be lifting the feet. So you're literally just swaying across to one side, across to the other side. First leg, second leg, over, 
and over. Remember, if you need the balance support from your chair, just place the hands lightly on the chair in front, up to you, over and over, chin level, check your posture, over and over and over and last one of these. Now bring your feet back to the center onto the railway tracks and we're ready for the next exercise. The best way to think about this, it's mini squats or mini dips. Best way to think is you've got a chair immediately behind you. Don't put the chair behind, but imagine it, all right? So imagine that you're about to sit down in that chair. So that's the action we're using. It's very simple. You're going to push your bottom backwards towards the imaginary chair seat and your knees will bend. Make sure as you do this that you feel you're directing your knees straight ahead, not pointing at each other. Knees must be parallel as they point ahead. So here we go. Tummy muscle gently in. You're going to push your bottom backwards and your knees straight ahead. Keep your chest high and your head looking ahead. And now halfway down, we're changing our minds and we're gonna stand up again, and that's it. So we go down into the mini dip and then we come back up again. So it's not a great big squat. It's bottom pushes back, knees bend, and then up we come. It's really gentle. You bend from the hips and knees, you come up to standing. So halfway down to sitting, then I change my mind and I return standing. And it's really smooth, all right? I've seen some clients do this like they're jack in a box. They jump up and down, they spring up and down. No, it's not that. It's really, really smooth. We are oiling the joints here of your ankles, your knees and your hips. And just steady, smooth movement is what it does it. So all the time, I'm just bending and straightening and bending and straightening. My arms just say, stay loose down by my sides with the palms by my legs. Or if you need it, you're putting your fingers on the chair in front of you. Either of those is absolutely fine. Be sure to keep checking the feel in your knees that you're pointing them straight ahead and not letting them touch each other or even look at each other. Problem of knees kissing, as I call it. If the knees are kissing, then your muscles in your legs are not doing their work properly. Okay, have you had enough of those yet? Right, we're just about done, I think, on those little dips. With those dips, you can do a lot of them because that's really good for all the joints. I'm now stepping on the spot again. Check when you're stepping that you didn't widen your feet. It's really common. People who don't do a lot of exercise do quite often widen their base, all right? So make sure that you've got your feet underneath your front hips. There's always a gap between them, but not a big gap, not a wide gap. All right, stopping still. Now, this is the first exercise where we need to turn our chair to the side. So take hold of the back of your chair and just swing it around so that it's at one side of you. You are going to have one hand on the chair back, all right? So the leg next to your chair is the one you're standing on, whichever side you've chosen. So I want you now to very subtly put all of your weight on top of your standing leg as though you're standing on one leg. You will have your hand holding onto the chair. The other leg is going to do a little football kick. Imagine football in front of you, directly by your toe. You are going to pull your heel slightly backwards behind you so you bend your knee, and then just give a gentle football kick. So you finish with your leg straight just in front of you. Then you pull the knee back again, heel comes towards your bum behind you, kick your football. Everything else needs to stay still. Use your tummy muscle to help support you. Keep your kick going. Gentle kick in front, pull back behind, lengthen the leg. Bend from the knee behind as you pull the heel to your bum. Straighten the leg to kick your football and kick. Your other arm, the arm next to the kicking leg, stays loose by your side. You try to stand as tall as you can on the leg next to your chair Try not to lean on the chair. This is doing, as well as the work for the kicking leg, it's doing quite a lot of balance work on the leg you're standing on. Okay, I think we've done enough kicks on that leg. 
and now both feet down and you'll immediately feel the leg you have been standing on has been doing a lot of work and you'll feel that on your hip and in your bum. Right, we have to turn the chair around to the other side. Bring your chair back in front and then swing it around to the other side of you. One hand on the chair back. Your weight is now standing, so shift it so that it's standing subtly over the leg next to your chair. Squeeze your buttock underneath you on that standing leg, it's gonna help. We're ready with the other leg. Imaginary football in front. Pull your heel backwards so that you bend your knee a bit, ready to kick that football. And back again. Kick the football, long leg there in front of you and then bend the knee behind as you get ready to kick again. These are small kicks. You need to check that your body is completely upright and still each time you swing that leg. And bring it back, lengthen it, bend it behind, lengthen it. A small kick. We're helping loosen through the knee joint here. Kick, kick, but you must not be swaying and backwards and forwards with it. You need to be holding really still. That is part of the exercise. And two more kicks on this side. Pull back with the heel, lengthen the leg. And pull back and now finish. Shake out your legs. Good. Okay, so after that one, we're going to bring the chair back in front if you're using it or out of the way if you're not. And we're just going to do a little elbow loosening. This is a really simple little exercise. I want you to turn both of your palms away so that they're facing forwards, all right? And then each hand in turn, you're going to bend at the elbow, bring your hand straight up to touch your shoulder almost and back down again. Other hand comes straight up to touch your shoulder and back down. It probably won't get there exactly, but just palm to the shoulder and open back down. Palm into the shoulder and open back down. Each arm, in turn and just keep that going one after the other. Keep your elbows still by the side of your body. So you should feel your elbow at the side of your body each time you move the arm in and away. So the elbow is not going backwards and forwards, it's staying still. Top half of your arm stays still, just the bottom half that comes in and away. Now we're doing both together. Two palms into shoulders and back down again. Elbows staying pretty much where they are at the sides of your body. If you lightly press them to the sides of your body, you'll be absolutely sure that they're in the right place. And arms in and down. And arms in and down. And now the last one, arms coming into the shoulders and back down to the ground in front of you. And finish there, shake out your arms. We're ready for the next exercise. You can keep the chair in front. And for this one, 100% I recommend Everyone, <laughs> keep your hands on the chair. You're going to use this chair for a bit of balance support because this exercise out of all of them, you really want some balance support. Okay, this is probably the trickiest exercise. We're going to stand again on one leg. So it's uh, that subtle shift of your weight onto the leg that's now going to be supporting you. The other leg, you're going to lift the foot and try to keep your knee on that leg right next to the other knee. So you can lightly touch the standing leg knee with the other one to make sure it stays in the right place. And then keep on lifting up your heel behind you and back down again. Right, you'll really feel this. It's very important for this exercise that you don't let the knee on the lifting leg stray in front. So. Just touch it very lightly by the other knee to make sure it's in the right place. Then pull that heel behind and back down again. Couple of words about this. You're probably already feeling this is tough. Firstly, tummy muscle gently pulling in because I don't want you arching your back, okay? If your back starts to feel really tight at the base of your spine, then less pulling in, please. Try to keep the tummy muscle working. Secondly, no leaning on your chair, it's cheating. And thirdly, a lot of people, either with back or in particular with knee problems, may find that they can't get that heel very high. You want to squeeze the heel in as far as possible, 
but if it's painful, please keep it really, really small, that pull behind you. And if you keep working it, over time, you might find that you can get it a little bit higher and a little bit higher. Right, we're gonna do a whole set now. The one you'll feel working the most, if you're doing this right, is the, the big muscles at the back of your thigh, so running from the bum down into the back of your knee. Hamstrings, they do a lot of work, and it's not nice. It feels like they're scrunching up. Sometimes people get a bit of cramp. Don't worry, as soon as the leg goes down, it'll go away. So you might get that cramp at first, persevere. Here we go, tall, tummy muscle in, standing on your one leg, other knee touches the knee as you pull the heel behind and back down again. And then we're going to, sorry, then we're going to the other side. So we're doing each leg in turn, sorry, forgot to say that. Okay, onto the other leg and here we go. First leg pulls in and back down again. Okay, swap your standing leg. So that's a very small movement from one leg to the other as we squeeze in and back. Then onto the other leg. Don't over sway from side to side. It's a small movement and back down. And first leg, heel into your bum. Remember, keep the knee next to the other one so it doesn't stray forwards. And in and down. Again, first leg, squeeze it in and down. Other leg, squeeze it in and down. Keep going, keep your abdominal muscles working here so that pull in on your lower abdominals, Ooh, squeeze in. Just one more set. First leg, squeeze it in behind, place it down. Other leg, squeeze the heel and down. And <laughs> shake out your legs, well done. Okay, all right, so we're done with that one. Now, either hands on chair or not hands on chair, very simple, side step. You step one foot to one side of you, you bring the other one with it onto the railway track. One foot steps back again, and the other one with it, back onto the railway tracks. Simple side step, one each way. So, we are going to step over, bring the other foot, step back, bring the other foot. Always with a side step, both feet move, but not at the same time. So you go over and over, back and back, step and step, step back, step back. Keep that going, and back and back. Over and over, back and back. To the side, back to your center. Stop there. We're going to do it all over again, and this time we're going to go the opposite side, all right? So we're going to start by going over to the other side. Ready? And side, then stepping back to your center. Be really sure that you're stepping both feet each time. Sometimes people find this a really difficult movement. If you're not used to doing side step, it's actually easy to get out of the habit of stepping sideways. And then sometimes what happens is you might just step one foot over and back and think you're doing it, but no, always both of your feet move one after the other, over and over, back and back, over and over, back and finish there. Right, now, you have a get out clause at this point. You've done enough and you've done some good loosening work. So you can take a rest, sit down in your chair, have a drink, or, if you feel that you haven't quite worked enough, I've got four more exercises. If you're going to sit at this stage, you might want to have a go at doing a bit of the next exercise, just sitting down, all right? And also, at the end, there's a couple that I'd like us to finish off with together. So don't stop the tape, but just listen up. If you're carrying on, this is what we're doing next. We're going to do a repeat of the little sitting back movement, which is your squat, where we're sitting, half sitting in the chair. And when we do it this time, the difference is we're also going to raise both arms really straight, diagonally to your sides, okay, as we sit downwards. So you've got two things to think about. You've got your sitting backwards, halfway down on your chair, and as you do it, you're raising your arms. Now, the arms. They only come up as far as your shoulder height, no higher, not too high. Secondly, they don't come out straight in front, they don't come out straight to the sides, they come up 
halfway between those two points. So they're diagonally out to the sides. Don't strain the arms by taking them too wide. Thirdly, palms are facing each other so that we're in neutral arm position. So think of it either palms in or thumbs to the ceiling and you'll get it. Okay, if you've worked out your arm position, we're ready to go. Tummy muscle in, here we go. Feet on railway tracks, sitting back into your half sit, arms diagonally out, long, and up we come. And I want you to float the arms, don't reach them too much. Float them to your sides as you go down again, and up we come. Remember, knees have to be pointing ahead as you push your bottom backwards into the chair that isn't there. Stay there for a moment and up you come straight. As you come up, your arms come down again every time. Arms float as you sit, arms return as you stand. Arms float as you sit, arms return as you stand. And I want the arms floating because I don't want you to hunch your shoulders. Shoulders open as you sit and back. And last one, and keep your chin level, don't let it drop. And up we come and finish there. I forgot to say this, but if you're sitting down, you could have just done your arms just then, lifting the arms up and back down again, all right? That would have been fine. Okay, next one. We're standing feet on railway tracks, and I want you to bring your hands, make fists, and bring your hands up to your chest so they're almost touching. So you're pointing your knuckles at each other here, and that means you're sticking your elbows straight out at the sides of your body. Now I want you to imagine this, a blob of paint on the tip of each elbow, and a great big white sheet of paper to either side of your body. You are going to make circles with your elbows on that sheet of paper, big ones. So we start going forwards and up with the elbows, then you're going to bring them up and draw the circle behind and back down to complete back at your starting point. To do this, you keep your hands still. So try to keep those fists close to each other and touching your chest. Here we go. Elbows circling up and pulling behind, coming around down and back to the start. Again, elbows up, around, back down behind and to the start. Check that you're keeping your hands still by your chest. They don't stay completely still, but they don't really move very much. You want to try to make sure they stay as still as possible. So we're making the elbows do the big movement. And we're gonna do a couple more of those. And here's the last one. Oh, and everything back down. Just shake out your arms there. Good. Now, this is the biggest arm movement of all this one. So this, I should say, if you have any shoulder issues, particularly if that last one was uncomfortable, and I should have said this at the time, if you find that doing that elbow circle gives you shoulder problems, it makes your shoulders painful, keep the circle low. Don't try to take the elbow too high, okay? Sorry I didn't mention that before but now you'll know for the next time you do it. And if you have shoulder issues, it's probably best not to try this next one. Or if you try it and you find it painful, then just be very cautious about it, all right? Because shoulder problems can be really horrible and we don't want to make them worse. But assuming that you can do this, we're going to take the arms straight up high in the air, one at a time. So you're standing feet hip width, abdominal muscles in, lower tummy muscle. Bring one hand up so that your hand is by your shoulder, straight next to your body, all right? So it's not out, it's, you're just bending the elbow straight up. And your hand is going to reach all the way up. So you're lengthening your arm right up by your ear, up above your head, reach your fingers high here, and then slide the arm back down, elbow bends, arm goes down straight by your side. Other arm, bend the elbow in, now your hand is pointing upwards or your fingers are pointing upwards and we're reaching high, 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 straight up by your head. So you've got the top of your arm by your ear and down you come bending the elbow, arm comes straight down. First arm, reaching it up, 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 right the way 
up high above your head. Now, take care, do not look upwards. It's a natural thing to raise your head so that your chin tips backwards, but don't do that. Keep your chin level as each of these arms goes up and down. First arm again, reaching it up high, high, high. You'll feel that big stretch right the way down one side as you do it. And we're taking the other arm. This is a bit of shoulder mobility work as well here. Remember, if it's shoulder pain you're getting, don't do it. And up we go, and then we're gonna do the last one, other side, and reaching the arm up high, and bringing it back down again. And just shake out your shoulders there, good. Okay, last standing exercise, chair to your side. You're gonna again stand on the leg next to the chair, and your hand will be lightly on the back of the chair for support. The leg, Furthest from the chair, which is the one doing the work, is going to be swinging, but this time, unlike the football kick, there's no bending in your knee at all. So we're doing a straight leg kick, all right? It's not even a kick, it's a swing. It's a very soft swing. So we're gonna stand on the leg next to the chair, then you're going to just brush the ground with your foot as that leg swings a little bit in front, a little bit behind. And remember what I said about straight leg, no bending in the knee, it's the hip where the swing is coming from. So think of the whole leg swinging, staying straight, and it's only a little bit in front and it's only a little bit behind. Because if you take that leg a long way behind, it's gonna scrunch your back, which we don't want. And if you take it too far, either direction, it's gonna start pulling you around. And I want you to keep the top part of your body really still. And that's enough of that. Shake out and feel the work on the standing leg. Now, bring your chair around in front and over to the other side. So you have hand on the chair back at your side. Leg next to the chair is the one you're gonna stand on. Other leg, gentle swing. Remember, pull in that abdominal muscle, tummy muscle, the belt of muscle there is your core stability. It helps with your balance. And that little brushing the ground, my leg is going straight in front, straight behind. And I promise you it's only a little way. Everyone who does this does it too far to start out with. And you want to try to keep your balance as still as possible as that leg just swings gently forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. The arm on that side is just loose at your side. All right, enough of that. It's quite hard work, shake out. Okay, bring your chair in front of you and now carefully come and sit down in your chair. So the last two exercises are sitting down. You can either sit at the front of the chair, but if you do, you have to keep your back nice and tall and lengthened up. So there's a good case at this point for sliding yourself right the way back so you've got a bit of support for your back in the chair. Feet on railway tracks still in front of you, but with your knees bent so that you've got your heels underneath your knees. One foot, you're going to bring it up onto the top of the toe, so your knee will have lifted just a fraction, and then the foot lifts just off the ground, and you're going to circle from your ankle, so you're making a big circle with the toe in front of you. All right, now here it's actually quite useful. Put the hand on that side on top of your knee to make sure that your leg isn't moving. It's just the ankle moving the foot around. Now go the other way around. So reverse your circle the opposite direction and still try to make sure you're keeping that knee really still so the leg's not moving. It's the ankle that's moving the foot. And now put it down. It's an ankle loosening exercise. Okay, let's do it on the other side. Just come up onto the point of the toe on that leg on the other side, keeping the knee bent. Then don't straighten the leg in front of you. You just lift the toe an inch off the ground and now do your circles. So your leg is a little bit in the air and that's quite hard work. And you're circling that ankle around, but keeping your leg really still. And then when you've done five or six of those, you're going round the other way. Try to make that circle with your toe as big as possible without moving the leg. Okay, so that might need a little bit of practice, that, in order to make sure you're moving the right bit and keeping the rest still. And now we're putting the leg back down and shaking out. Okay, 
Now slide to the front of the chair and here's the best bit, we're done. Right, here's the big finish stretch. Take your fists again to the center of your chest like you did a moment ago with the elbow exercise. And now we're just gonna do the biggest yawn ever. So you're gonna breathe in. And you're just gonna let your arms come wide and do a big yawn, arms straight, bring them down. So I'm making a big circle with my arms here, like I would if I was yawning. Just do a big yawn, that'll be it. Make sure you breathe big as well. Here we go, breathe in. And yawn and breathe out and bring the arms round and down. And one more of those. Breathe in, hands together here and now arms apart to your sides, bring them, circle them down and finish by just shaking out your shoulders. Whew. Congratulations, you've done it. So this is your really thorough loosening up exercise. Loosen up the body, we did it. You can safely do this exercise every day, all right? And it should really make you feel better. It should set you up for the day. So please give me some feedback. Let me know how this is for you. I'm at jane at if ginger can do it, all one word, dot com. Jane at if ginger can do it, dot com. Don't forget to drink some water. Don't forget to check out some of the other stuff, lots of videos, and there will be more audio descriptions coming along. Thanks for doing it. See you again.